All right, I, this time I'm gonna work with Atlas on actually leading. We're gonna attach the rope. Um, right now, I'm just kind of doing some review with him. Oh, I want him to touch the cone as his start button and then I will toss the rope around his legs. So I've really done the whole body here. I did the left side, I've tossed the rope um, all over his body on this side and I'm just kind of showing you just a little bit here um, of what I've been doing but I didn't want to show the whole process because we've already seen that before. So um, now I'm kind of just ending by like dragging the rope on the ground. I'm gonna do it in front of him too because he is worried about having the rope dragging and that's a possibility when we start leading. So I want him to just kind of get used to it and be rewarded for remaining calm. So there he's gonna touch the cone. So I'm gonna just toss the rope and then just drag it back to me. And he was pretty good about that. He's not too worried. Um, but that's the process I did with the rope. And now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the target. So um, I'm gonna remind him like, okay, you can move off the halter when I grab underneath it. And then I'm just gonna show him the target. And once he moves forward toward it, I'm gonna let go of the halter and click at the same time and then feed him a treat. So here he's getting a little stuck. I'm just gonna try and hold him and show him to go this direction. And then once he leans that way, I'm gonna click and let go and give him a treat. So he was close. He wasn't, um, he didn't necessarily take a step that way, but I'm okay with that. There he wanted to move away a bit. So I'm just gonna pet him and then bring him back and show him what I want to do. So before Atlas um, knows how to touch the target, he knows how to follow the target, but this is the first time of him blending the two together. So he knows how to lead from the halter and the pressure from on the halter from my hand, but he has not um, done it with the target yet. So we're just adding them together um, and trying to do little baby steps for him. Cause he just gets stuck like here. He wants to you think he might need to go forward. I'm trying to ask him to go back. So then that results with his legs just lifting. <laughs> so um, we go ahead and move the rope out of the way so he doesn't get tangled and scare himself. Um, but I'm just going to ask him to go forward sideways or not sideways, side to side and back up. And we'll just kind of do that. It's just kind of whenever I feel like he could go that way or he's kind of set up for it. Um, I don't just practice one part of it. I try to do all the motions of leading. So I asked with my hand there and asked him to move off that pressure and then, um, I just back that up with asking him to go forward and touch the target. So then he can feel that pressure and then he's like, oh, I see the target. I should follow it. And then I can release. So I'm really setting him up to follow it and get a release off of that pressure while also keeping his focus on that target. So there I asked him to stop. He stopped well. I s <laughs> then he wanted to go forward. He's a little confused on what to do, but he's trying and he's remaining calm. So that's all I can ask for right now. So ask him to go forward. He's doing pretty good there. That was not bad. He was, I have the target, but he wasn't necessarily like tracking it. So um, not too bad. Um, I'm just going to kind of bring in the target when he gets stuck, have him, it shows him something to focus on, something to follow, just gives him a little bit more clarity. And I feel like the target for Atlas really worked very well with his leading because I was just kind of stuck um, with that so um he reviewed really well so i'm going to bring in the piece of twine which you've seen in the previous video or two videos something like that um but he hasn't really seen it since i think the summertime this video was filmed in november so the last video you would have seen was from october and i don't think i had the twine out at that point i really think it was the last time was in the summer but um so i'm kind of reintroducing it a little bit he's a little worried about it here i'm just going to move it around um, his face and then go ahead and string it through hit the little loop on his halter underneath where the lead rope clip would go um, and then I want him to just kind of touch it and target it and see it moving and just reward him for that so it's a little hard to see because I'm kind of in the way but you can see off to my right hand you can see the loop that the um, twine is making and I'm just having him touch the target while he can see the twine and it's kind of moving and he's not too worried so I'm gonna have him just follow the target and just get used to the sensation of having something attached to his halter and then he wanted to touch the cone and then I kind of just held the twine there and he moved off of it really well and I um, held up the target for him to, to have that visual and he came back to it really nice he didn't panic or anything so that was pretty good so we're just gonna do some a little bit of leading. Um, there he came off of it really nice there as well. So I'm just gonna hold and release just like I would normally. And then if he's kind of a little stuck, I'm just gonna show him the target. And then when he goes forward to touch it, 
I'm going to click and release. So I needed to get some more food here. So I just unstrung the twine and you can see there when I took it off how it works. So if you were to get super worried, I could just let go and it will just come off because it's just looped through there. But he stood really well for me putting it through the loop again this time. So that was really nice. And he's leading off quite nicely, honestly. Um, since he has that fear of ropes, I really wanted to break it down for him and show him that it wasn't a big deal. And then if he wanted to leave, it's okay. The twine would just slide out of his halter. No big deal. Um, that's just because Atlas is a very fearful horse. Um, I don't want to scare him. I don't want the rope chasing him. I, I really wanted to just get him over it by building his confidence, not just attaching a rope and hoping for the best. Um, I felt like this worked pretty well. Um, I really liked um, using the target for him and kind of getting him through that together. Um, I liked this method pretty well, but I think um, in the future, like if I would were to get another Mustang, I'd probably just get him haltered with a drag rope in the beginning. So then he's kind of coming into this new situation with that equipment already. And I felt like that would just be um, just a little bit easier and faster. Um, but this is definitely a valuable way to do it if that is not something that you want to do. So, because in the beginning, that's not something that I wanted to do. I wanted to do all the halter breaking myself and um, with the positive reinforcement, it, it was definitely more challenging than I thought. And also not just that, but my schedule, because you can see how these videos are very spaced out. I work a full time, I go to school full time, and then I train the horses. So I didn't have a lot of time that I thought I would when I adopted both of them. So um, but I thought that this method did work really well. I thought it was really interesting and there was really no drama at all when he was starting to lead. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so if you're looking for a method that, where there's very little pulling and drama and stuff, this might be the one for you. So like this is really nice right here. He's leading really well. He's not afraid of the twine. Like it's pretty cool. So if you have a horse that's more confident and not so worried, then I wouldn't use this because the twine makes you really close. And then there's really no need to. You can just attach a lead rope um, and, ha and then start leading from there. Um, if your horse is pretty quiet or you could use it as a drag rope and just put them in a safe area like a round pen and just let them drag it and then they can start learning about pressure and release on their own. I did eventually do this with Atlas because I am voicing this over from like this. I didn't voice this over exactly when I did this. It's been it's been over. It's been about a year now since I've filmed this because I'm very backlogged on videos. But um, if you don't want to do this method, I would put your horse in a probably a nylon halter, like a flat one, not a leather halter because that's probably going to break. Um, keep an eye on him, like be there with the horse, put a um, lead rope on them that's fairly stiff so it can't really get tangled. And then what I did with Atlas later on is put some grain in some pans and just had him go from one to the other so he can learn about the drag rope, see the rope drag, step on the rope, and then also get some food. So I tried to make it a little bit more positive and you will see videos of that later on. I do do that in the future. But um, for right now, this looks pretty good. Um, he's leading pretty well. Like he's coming off the pressure. He's following me. He doesn't need the target every time to really show him where to go. He's really coming off of that pressure. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, after all of the uh, trials we had with getting him halter broken, this target really worked out really well. It, this looks great right here. So we just kind of slowly build up the steps. This looks really nice too. Um, so I start with like one forward step, then two forward steps and three and so on. And I really do like make sure that he goes a couple steps, I click him, then we add another step. I'm not gonna go like, okay, well he's halter broken, so let's do two laps in the round pen. Like he's not ready for that. I do everything very slow and step by step and I thin slice each piece for him to understand so that he's not super worried. He understands what I'm trying to teach him. So this looks really good. He, I'm kind of going off to the side, trying to see if he'll step forward. And uh, before, in the previous videos, you could see him get worried when the twine or the rope was taut. Like, I think he's worried that it's the same as the electric fence. And here, so like when I kind of take him off to one side or the other, that's when he would get worried is because that rope would get real tight and he would be like, oh my gosh, it's a fence or something. And right here, he looks really nice. Like he's done some some turns like right here. That looks really good. And see, we've built up. We did that whole like little 
half turn right there. He's doing some backup steps at the end. Like he's doing really well. So I just started just holding some pressure on the lead rope and then showing him that target. And then as soon as he comes forward to that target, I let go and I click and feed. So, and then I build up to two steps, three steps and so on. And then I do the same thing um, going side to side and going backwards. So it's all very step by step, but this looks fantastic. So right now, like probably halfway through the video, he didn't even need the target. I still have it, um, which is just a regular riding crop. And I like that it's got the little end. It's like a jumping bat. Um, and he, it's got like that end on it that he can really see and touch that. So um, it's a little bit easier than using like a dressage whip because it's a little harder for them to see. But he looks really good. This is pretty awesome for not being worked with really and not having any leaning experiences. And he got a little stuck there. I'm just going to kind of show him. I'm going to use the target a little bit there. He got a little sticky, but not too bad. Because this is his very first time, so he's still figuring it out. Try to figure it out there. Show him the target and have him come forward. And then I'm still going to work a lot in the round pen and we're going to definitely work with the leader before I take him out anywhere. And my uh, round pen is right next to my arena. So I'm just going to go from the round pen into the arena. So he's in a bigger space, but he's enclosed. It's safe. Work on some leading in there. And then I'll start leading him like to and from his pasture, like to the round pen and back. And before I start doing that, but he's looking quite good. I try different positions too, like I'm facing forward, I'm facing him, and having him really come off of that pressure, and that looks really nice. I'm just trying to show him that it doesn't matter what position I'm in, he still could, should come up off that pressure. So that was really nice, and he wasn't worried when I um, pulled off the twine, and he's standing really nice for his halter to come off, kind of bend his nose a little bit, that was really good, really, really great for him.